Oh, hello! I'm Camter, your tavern keeper, and today we are in a new location. This is going to be my new set for any live action uh, things relating to board games and any other uh, visual media I want to do that isn't in front of like a, my computer screen, stuff like that. And hi, this is Jaina. Jaina is my new cat. I'm going to keep this in because that is hilariously adorable and also I don't know how that turned out. <laughs> so here, we're just going to put you back down there for a bit. Good kitty. She's a good kitty. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the new thing. It's going to get more decorations on it. I'm hoping to get some more uh, comic stuff up top, uh, get more view of the board game area. I might have it actually tilted so we have uh, more shelving from the kitchen. It's, it's a small space, but... Uh, there's several ways to uh, come across it, but this is how I uh, like it for now. And uh, <laughs> I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, yes. Dungeons and Dragons. In this case, actually, Pathfinder, 5th edition. 5th edition. 1st uh, edition. Uh, <laughs> Cat has gotten me all bothered up. Uh, we are talking about how to send off a character in style. Uh, for those who have played D&D before and have had long, uh, you know, campaigns, there has been times where if you had to silently part ways with the character, not due to heroic actions or tragic deaths, but real life and uh, bad scheduling. Uh, this case, our friend Alex had to unfortunately move out of state uh, for a job, and we had to unfortunately cycle out his character he was actually in this uh, campaign for almost a full year and one of the founding members and we won't really need to know too much about the uh, situation that they were in for this because there's a lot of spoilers in it but I will be naming some characters that I used from this book to kind of give him the farewell and kind of how it played out and this isn't just about how to send off a character it's really kind of a, about two things. One, finding a way to get rid of character without just killing him off or, you know, just poof, he's gone. R written out, no uh, explanation. And it's also about getting players engaged with a story that isn't really... It isn't pulling the characters in or doesn't really have any consequences for them. In this part of the Rise of the Rune Lords uh, series, it's chapter two, and it's essentially a murder mystery. And the players are tasked to help this town of Sandpoint, or in my case, Sandport, because I'm dumb and I can't read, uh, find their uh, find out who the killer is using clues from Chapter 1, as well as um, some other clues throughout the entire um, place, or play, uh, campaign. So what happened was the players were tasked with finding out how... Uh, the murders were being done and who was doing it. There's a lot of undead and uh, ghouls involved, and there's one culprit in particular that has been taunting the players using messages, particularly to our warrior. And our, I keep calling warriors, our fighter, she is unfortunately the only female in the group that is attractive. Uh, the group party consists of a bard, a sor wizard, a, I'm sorry, let me double check that. A Scald, which is a war, uh, fighter slash bard hybrid. A fighter. A witch. A wizard. A druid, which we then converted into a uh, ranger, uh, for simplicity's sake. I think that's everybody. Bum, 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 bum. Yep, yeah, there's five. So the group has kind of made acquaintances with several NPCs in the city. Uh, one of them being uh, Shalalu. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce her name. She's a ranger that was supposed to be a one-off character, which I made fall in love with the wizard. The wizard is belonging to our friend who unfortunately is having to leave the campaign. So pretty much how I had the story set up was they Shalalu was madly in love with our wizard name, uh, Zakuzagug. And if that name sounds weird, it's because he didn't have a name when the campaign started. He never came up with one. So his character's name slowly has been uh, given to him as he's critically hit with spells, giving him insight, and we've randomly given him a new letter. So his name was Sukuzugu. And Sukuzugu uh, didn't fancy her. 
which is uh, pretty fun. Uh, A, because I thought it would be funny to make him uncomfortable, not realizing that his uh, significant other was going to be joining our group as our warrior uh, fighter, the Carnus. I'm slowly revealing names as uh, time progresses. I might just put a list of all the names uh, up <laughs> right now so you kind of know who I'm talking about. And so we're doing this campaign, and they get to the point where they go to this asylum. And inside of this asylum, they run into a madman who was affected by the murderer. And in the final campaign with Sukuzigug, the campaign kind of got put into a standstill. They, they're like, all right, we got as many clues as we can. We're being taunted by this guy, but we don't know who it is, and we don't want to wait for another murderer. So the players kind of do the sensible thing, and they wait things out. And that's when I could kind of tell that they hit, a, they hit a standstill. They didn't know where to go from here without me directly telling them, and they just lost an important character. So I thought that this would be a good opportunity to write in a scenario to write out the main character, as well as kind of give a little bit of drama. And I know I've been leading up to this, but there's a lot of like weird backstory, and I'm trying to keep it in without having too much spoiled if you guys want to do Rise of the Rune Lords. So what I did was, I made Sukuzugu go mad by killing off the NPC Shilelu. I did some research and I found out that she was only useful for one section of the campaign in the book kind of is like, if you want to use her, go for it. If not, you can kill her off and have her go into the woods and never be seen again. And I started the campaign off with several NPCs meeting up and talking about how there's no leads, you know, it's really frustrating. Uh, the, the NPCs kind of were trying to guide the players into kind of a lead. And they're like, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to meet tomorrow in the Rusty Dragon and we'll talk about, you know, where we can go from here. During the night, I had Shalalu kidnapped by the uh, the murderer. Uh, best way to kind of describe it is the murderer kidnaps her and holds her hostage at the asylum that they were just at as a warning. Now, the players aren't happy with this. Because in most cases, if you steal something or someone from the players that they care about or want to know more about, uh, you don't take their shit. They get mad. And I convinced them, all right, follow the trail. They followed the clues, our druid, uh, Tiny Thorn. He was able to use his tracking skills to find out that they went back to the asylum, uh, but they weren't the first ones there. It seems like there was a big kind of show in this town that someone found a body, and unfortunately it was Shalalu. And in the third story of this asylum, she is hanging upside down, carved with a message to our players, saying the clock's ticking. Now, with Sukuzugu being gone, I was role-playing him kind of lightly, making sure that the players knew he was still there, and I went made him essentially just heartbroken, upset, crushed. And it kind of seemed like it was out of character for the uh, player, but you also got to keep in mind that he was very kind of shy and self-spoken, so I kind of gave him a little bit of emphasis on, okay, things are getting bad, now they're attacking us directly. And he was a very unstable person with amnesia, and he kind of snapped. And essentially, the the group tries to hold him down. They're like, "We we can't we can't let you you know go." And he's like, "No, I'm ah, I can't handle this anymore." Ah. And he somehow gets on pants and he ran into the forest. The they grapple failed. Essentially, grabbed onto his pants, got rid of his pants, and the wizard ran off into the forest, never to be seen again currently. In case he ever wants to come back, which he is at some point, he's going to um, come back and he's gonna they're gonna try to work it out. But first problem solved. The character now is distraught, he's gone he's gone mad, he's upset, and now he's going to find the murderer himself and they can't find him. The second problem is there's still a body up on the top of the roof. So the rest of the party goes, Wow, holy shit dude, that was dark. And I'm like Time call of action, you know, it's like you guys aren't you guys aren't following the clues you have, you guys haven't looked at your notes, time's ticking, you know. And so they rush up and they try to cut down her body, and unknowingly, our scald, uh I can't remember his name right now. I am so sorry. 
what is his name? Oh. I'll have to text him and apologize for this. Uh, I can't remember his name. He uh, attempts to cut her down. And the problem is she's been converted to a ghoul. And like most ghouls, they are bloodthirsty and rabid and they want nothing to do with you except for to eat you. So not only have I killed off an important NPC, I also made it a boss. And the players, knowing that ghouls are trouble for the party, they they took it a little bit differently. Usually um, they take things head on. Karnas, our warrior, is very headstrong. Uh, our bard is very courageous and he's very kind of show showmanship and boasty and they're kind of the two shot callers of the group our witch really kind of goes with the flow and does whatever the hell she wants uh and then i think her yeah the witch's name is mary uh mary kind of does what she wants and um our druid he's he's still learning the game he's, he still doesn't understand how to role play he, he's still kind of slowly coming in it so he kind of follows so the group decides, let's just drop her off. Not realizing that if they dropped her, she could potentially go into the crowd. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to pull her up and then tie her in the restrainer to see if there's a cure for uh, ghoulishness. And this is when the rules started to not shine in their favor. They pulled her up and she got a hold of Karnas and starts, on the ground, starts attacking her. And I think it was Karnas. Uh, essentially, fight starts happening and you know push comes to shove a couple actions uh one of them actually push, pushes her off and she starts falling uh towards the ground and she lands on the ground and she starts getting up our witch uses the uh spell web to stick her to the ground and now she's kind of in i want to say superhero pose but kind of that uh pose that superheroes make when they're on the ground and their arms are behind them and they're like kind of looking up and She's down there, and she's rattling. She's, she's trying to get at the people below. And the group's at a position where they're like, okay, she's now an immediate threat. We can't just restrain her. We, we're going to have to kill her. Our bard, our scald, keep calling him bard, our scald uh, decides to jump off the building and slow fall to stab her in the back of the chest. Now, everybody in the party's like, wait, what? So he just runs and jumps off, casting slow fall on himself, but the rest of the party doesn't know. They're like, oh no, we gotta get down there. Some try to go down the stairs, some people actually start climbing the side of the building. So it's kind of like a madhouse. So if you're looking at this from the ground floor, you see a ghoul just fall down, she start, gets back up, and she starts raving, and then you see this crazy witch throw webs on her like Spider-Man, and now she's restrained. And then you have someone jump off and is slowly, very slowly, falling to the ground with a spear, screaming, as skulls do, bloody murder, trying to kill this thing. And so I'm like, all right, what you're going to need to do is you're going to you're gonna slowly fall, and I need you to roll damage. And he's like, first, I want to roll a perform. And I'm like, okay, what are you performing? Is it, uh, you know, one of your spells? He's like, no, I want to make sure that this is the most heroic and like badass thing you could possibly see coming from the sky to stab the bad guy and i'm like oh no don't do it this is gonna end horribly because their rolls all night have just been awful one person fell off the building at one point and had to you know grab onto a reflex save to make sure he, i didn't kill him and so he's slowly falling down actually these are horrible figures for it i just picked some things he's coming down very slowly at this kneeling NPC and he crits he, he's going to deal double damage enough to kill the monster and he's also really high in performance so the best way I describe this kill is if you've ever played Final Fantasy 7 and there's a certain scene, spoilers where Sephiroth comes down and stabs Aerith in the back and I said that's how the scene plays out at one fourth speed here it is awkward isn't it yes she <laughs> she had the slowest most painful death and as he impales her to finish her off he goes that was so badass and the ghoul responds with i know thank you thank you and just 
<laughs> making him kill this NPC in the most goofy and memorable way possible. And it in the end, after the smoke clears, they lost an important NPC that they've known for a long time and has aided them in several uh, parts of the campaign. They've had to lose a friend due to entire grief, and now they're being targeted directly by a murderer. It was also a really damn fun session. It really was. Everybody had a good time, and we still talk about it as probably the best way to kill off that character. Because she was useless. She was really, really awful in the long shot. She, she was always kind of a hindrance and never a help, but they still found her charming. And... I think that's the best way to, to handle a situation like that, where if you are going to have to kill an NPC off, you kind of you kind of want to leave it so the players have options. I did attempt to make sure that they uh, could restrain or maybe put them in the asylum, but it sound it, it just kind of ended up that's that's how things went, and so it, it was a very impactful moment. Not only because we lost a character, we had to kill off an NPC. Um, but overall, I think it's probably... It's, it's a memorable moment, and that's why I'm bringing it up. It's not just, you know, following the lines of the book. It was very... It, it was story-driven. And the players, I think, felt in control, and they felt that the, the conclusion to this arc of the, the campaign, losing one of the founding members of this party, should go out like that. And... I, I'm very proud of it because it was something I planned out and I wanted to kind of see how it went and let the players drive how they uh, went towards this this goal of you know bringing down her body after losing a member. So it, it it worked out and now that he is coming back to the group, we didn't we we don't have to have him come back with a new character. He's going to come back. He's going to be. I think we're going to reintroduce Amnesia. I don't know if I talked about the party about this. But we're going to reintroduce Amnesia, and it's going to be funny. So if you're watching this, spoilers, this is something I'm planning. But, yeah, overall, um, I'm, pr I'm proud of it. It's probably one of my favorite moments in this campaign so far. And it's, it's a good way to um, kind of encourage that roleplay aspect. It, I, I'm talking, I'm just like, Here, here's another thing you can do. But overall, it, it's just a fun moment. It's a fun moment I love to discuss, and this is kind of why I love these videos, is because I get to talk about and share in rambling form just just game sessions and moments like that. And that's kind of leading into an announcement that I wanted to make in this video, is we are, we here at Spastic Gaming, me, um, <laughs> I don't even know. Here is all my titles. We are going to be doing D&D uh, &D sessions on stream. We're going to probably do it both simultaneously on Twitch and YouTube, and then have a video on demand on YouTube using this space. Um, we're going to probably be running the Horde of the Dragon Queen, which is a 5th edition uh, campaign for levels 1 through 6. And we're going to do it once a month, probably in the afternoons on Saturdays where we're just going to play for probably three or four hours, uh, get a good session in, and then do it once a month, hopefully. And if this goes well, we'll continue it. Uh, there's board games I want to play. There's all sorts of other stuff on the shelf I want to do. So this space is going to evolve the way that uh, Tales from the Tavern Keeper are going to evolve. Uh, it's stuff I'm going to work on. And I'm going to try to get some more production value in this. Um, I have a multi-cam setup. I have many ways of doing things. So... Uh, get excited, uh, suggestions, comments, let me know what you guys want to see out of both ta Tales from the Tavern Keeper as well as this D&D series coming up. If you have any suggestions on the storytelling, uh, more things that you want to see, please let me know in the comments down below. Blur. Uh, I love feedback. I, I really do, and I love interacting with uh, people who watch the video, even if you're a first-time viewer or if you are someone who's been watching us for a very, very long time. Please let me know what you think, and until next time, this has been Camter, your tavern keeper, and I shall see you next time in the inn. Farewell, travelers. Damn, that's a good exit. I'm keeping it. <laughs> she agrees. <laughs>